Hello, this video is on damping and second order differential equations. Um, this comes up in the MEI, Edexcel and AQA further maths courses. And of course, if you're doing physics, this is in the physics as well. So hopefully this maths will help you with it. So let's have a look at a real life um, situation that we're going to use this in. And the most obvious one this uh, comes from is uh, wheels on cars. And we go over a bump and our wheel starts to bounce up and down. So what do we do to sort that out? Well, firstly, we've got a spring here. There's a spring and it's a coil spring, something like that. So that's going to have a term. Um, Kx is going to be the force on that. So that start, we go over a bump, that starts bouncing up and down. And if nothing else happened, it would carry on with a simple harmonic motion. So we need to damp out that simple harmonic motion. And we do that with a damper. These dampers here are sections here, usually got oil or something in them in the old days, something that um, resists motion. So effectively, this is creating some sort of CV force. Um, that's resisting the whole thing and we therefore get an equation second order diff equation that looks a bit like that I've got an acceleration term a damping term and i've got um there i've got my spring oscillation term there we go so what does the designer do well they're going to tune this system because they want the um to set the damping coefficient such that it minimizes both the amplitude of this sort of displacement and the time of that oscillation so there we go let's have a look at our setup is a um, false diagram of that whole setup and therefore i've got my mg force uh, my damping force cv and i've got my spring force kx now i'm going to ignore the mg because that's just a constant and i get a differential equation that looks like that having changed the a into d2x by dt squared and therefore i get an auxiliary equation for my uh, complementary function of that form a quadratic in z okay so we know how to solve this we've looked at solving these in previous videos so let's just check the setup that we're looking at First thing, I've got a plus omega squared term there. So I've got, in principle, I've got an oscillation going on. And what I'm going to do is think about varying my coefficient, um, damping coefficient k, and seeing what that does to my auxiliary equation. Well, that's a quadratic, isn't it? So really, we're being driven by our discriminants. So if the discriminant is greater than zero, k, that is k squared is greater than four omega squared, I'm going to get some sort of exponential decay if my discriminant is zero i k squared equals my four omega squared i start having an oscillation but i have that special term out the front the at plus b because i've got a repeated root and finally if uh, my discriminant was less than zero i get a complex solution because k squared is less than four omega squared and what do i get well i get some sort of exponential decay term and then I get some sort of sine wave vibration going on there. So let's have a quick look, shall we? And um, what I'm going to do is use um, an MEI um, GeoGebra file. This is really useful. So thank you to MEI, bigging up MEI. This is on the Integral uh, website. And I'm going to start off here. We can see I've got a, uh, um, a weight on the end of a spring here on the left hand side. Here's my auxiliary, it says my differential equation there, and therefore it's calculating the discriminant of the auxiliary, and here it's showing us uh, the function. So what have I got? I've got simple harmonic motion in this setup, omega equals 1, and if I just click the button here, we can see the, the weight bouncing up and down, simple harmonic motion, um, that would be pretty uncomfortable, wouldn't it? We'd just be bouncing up and down all day. It's just like being in the back of my old Uncle Arthur's Chevy and parlor, and you, know, you go over a bump and you, you feel like it's going to go on forever and ever. And if you're in the back, you're getting bounced all over the place. 
So let's start putting in some damping by changing my B here because A, B and C here are the um, coefficients of my quadratic. So let's put some B in now. I've got some size 0.1 B. Here we go. Now we're starting to see um, that my vibration is decaying. It's decaying quite slowly, isn't it? We're getting loads of bounces. This is probably, again, still like the Chevy going up and down. Um, and we're getting overshoot, aren't we? So we start off at plus two and we end up going to minus one and a half. So we're bouncing big oscillations, positive and negative. So if I carry on increasing my B function, that's my K in effect, um, you can see that the vibration is now starting to damp out more quickly. I'm still getting my overshoot. I'm still going out to negative one. Um, and I'm going to carry on and on. And as I increase the damping, my overshoot is reducing. By about six seconds now, I'm back near the zero point, aren't I, here? And I'm going to carry on and on. You can see my overshoot's reducing and reducing and reducing. And... What's the key point? Well, it's when the discriminant goes to zero. So when k squared equals two omega squared. So that's when k equals two. Let's have a look. When we get to k equals two, see the form um, of the solutions just reduced. It's no longer got any vibration in it. It's just an exponential decay. And you can see here that we're pretty well going to be stopped our vibration in about four seconds now. Yeah, back to zero. Doesn't overshoot, just goes there. And this is called um, critical damping. That's the quickest that you could get to back to zero. If I started to increase my K, what's the effect now? Here we go, going K and pretty large now. Um, and what's happening? Well, it's still going to zero, but it doesn't go there quickly, does it? it in fact, in four seconds, it's still got an um, amplitude of one. Um, that's because what we've done is we've made our damping really stiff, so it doesn't want to move. It's really slow. This is called heavy damping. Yeah, so it's not good because it doesn't get back to zero very quickly, does it? So heavy damping gets us back to zero very slowly. Let's just work our way back and just observe what we saw. If I go back to k equals 2, this is critical damping, and it gets us back to zero without any vibration, gets as quickly as possible, so we're back in about four seconds. So that's called critical damping. And if I then start reducing my damping coefficient, this is called light damping, because here we've got quite a lot of oscillation still going on with a lot of overshoot, and that's not going to be very pleasant. So what are we going to do with our design? Well, we're going to try and get to critical damping. That's what we're going to do. We're going to size our um, damper such that we're at critical damping by sizing it compared to the natural frequency and looking at omega. So there we have it for today. Um, if we've got damp system uh, like this, we get a second order differential equation. We really want to get to critical damping. That's the diagram in the middle where k squared equals 4 omega squared discriminant 0. If we put less damping in, it's going to vibrate. That's the top one. And if we put heavy damping in, it's going to be very slow to get back to zero. So there you have it. I hope that's useful.